can I do for you? Oh, little song, little dance. Batman's head on a lance. Tell me, uh, what do you know about I don't know anything about Batman. Really? Yeah. Well, how about a little you and me? Hmm? You're insane. I thought I was a Pisces. Come on, let's make up. I have a little whiff of my posy. <laughs> Bingo. Time to pay the check. There was a conversation about who should play the Joker. And there were ads with Batman. There were not names, you know, Robin Williams, other every, so many actors wanted to be the Joker that everyone had to be dealt with appropriately. Jack Nicholson as the Joker, I mean, it's like you don't even have to be a casting director. Right? Nobody even have to say anything. I mean, that was just everybody's first choice because he is the Joker. I mean, there's just no question about it. The fear is almost more like um, he's almost too perfect, but I mean, he's so great that he even transcends that. You know, he even goes beyond your expectations just because he's so good. We had known Jack Nicholson for a while and the idea was, would Jack play a role like that? This is not the kind of film Jack Nicholson played in. You know, this is the guy from The Last Detail and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. We're talking about a force of nature, an acting force of nature. Jack was never one to just work with a director. There was no one, no actor alive who respects a filmmaker more once he decides to do it. But he has to decide to do it. So Tim had to convince Jack that he was right. And I remember we went up to Aspen and Jack says, let's go riding. He's gonna, he's gonna meet Tim Burton. And Tim says, I don't ride. And I said to him, you do today, you know? And there's a picture of him on the horse with, with, <laughs> with Jack. And Jack's a good rider, a really good rider. And, and Tim Burton looks like he discovered God on that horse. I, I, I was t terrified. And it's like, there is, I'm out with Peter Goober and, and Jack Nicholson on horseback, you know, up in, in Aspen, I'm going, I didn't realize this was, you know, horseback riding was part of my job description, but uh, it was, uh, sur you know, it was a surreal moment. He was not a happy camper, but he did it, and Jack committed to the project. I don't know because of the horse riding, but but I think that uh, they, they had a good bonding there, and that moved the project yet further ahead. Once, you know, so somebody like him gets involved, it just raises the bar of everything else, uh, uh, and... Uh, just creates a buzz about it, an excitement that, that just permeates everything, really. I was afraid because of my feel of the television series and the way movies tend to be done and talked about, I didn't want this to go through the normal, let's brighten it up for the kids, you know what I mean? I thought this was a, a very strong, in every way, transitional movie about the genre and really why they wanted me in there. You know, in other words, on a superficial level at that moment, it gave it, oh, this is not just another cartoon movie. It changed the nature of the comic framework into a film, from a movie into a film with the inclusion of Jack Nicholson. There was something to be discovered there by the critics and by the media, because they would find it intriguing that Jack wanted to do that. Part of the thinking in getting Nicholson was really similar going back to the Marlon Brando concept in the first Superman picture. You get such a great deal of respectability for the picture, for what you're trying to do, that not only does that help bring audiences in from young to old, but it also makes it very attractive to other major stars to want to become the next Batman villain, to follow in the footsteps of Jack Nicholson. When Jack entered the movie, 
the balance of the movie started to shift a little bit. So you wanted to, you know, play to your strengths. You know, the Joker became a little bit more than he actually was in the earlier drafts, which is only smart. You know, you make the you make the changes. It's no different than a sports team making the adjustments at halftime or something like that. To this day, I always took this performance more seriously than probably anybody in the world because I looked at it that way. My early experience told me from working for an audience full of children, the more you scare them, the more they like it. The worse you are, the better. Because that was my response to the joke. I mean, after all, this is a hateful occurrence, this man. And if you looked at it literally, every kid loves this guy, I believe. And I particularly love just the name, Joker. It's fantastic. The studio felt the marquee of, of Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson changed the nature of the film. And he recognized that. And they negotiated a very strong deal, especially in the back end, because it was a short schedule. It turned out not to be a short schedule, though. And because of his presence, and because of his performance, and because of the weight of his, of his existence, really he made an incredible, indelible imprint on that genre and on that film, and made a lot, I mean, a lot of money, and deservedly so.